and we are live hello <laughs> hello everybody um i am so happy and pleased to be able to um connect or introduce you guys to the healing vet dr edward facing thwaite name. It's too no. <laughs> <laughs> is that right basing thwaite basing thwaite uh, is it welsh it's it's english oh, in the english. late district yeah, cool. Our oh, Lake District. And um, yeah, talking yeah. about... And I've got Mitzi here too, who's, who's oh, helping. She's gorgeous. He is lovely. He's also kind of reactive to yeah. other dogs and things like that. Gets overexcited very easily, which is yeah. kind of hard because we're talking about the Dog Anxiety Summit tonight. Yes, we are talking about the Dog Anxiety Summit, um, which you are organising. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, but maybe first... Give us a bit of background about yourself and why you're doing the summit and what it means to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Dr. Edward. I'm known as the Healing Vet. I'm a, a, an integrated holistic veterinarian, graduated from the University of Queensland in 1995. So I've been in practice for 27 years now, which seems kind wow. of unbelievable. Um, I've, I've had a really strong, I've been really fortunate in that I, I grew up on a cattle property. So I started working with animals, you know, very at a very early age um we had uh, extensive beef operation and did all our cattle work on horseback so when i was younger i was mad keen on training and competing on horses camp drafting all that sort of thing um then i came i, I learned the old school ways the not so good ways of training and breaking in horses then i came across the work of monty roberts who wrote the the book the man who listens to horses and that was where i first started realizing that wow you can communicate with animals in a way they understand and build partnerships um, based on mutual respect and understanding which is a totally different kettle of fish uh, then i went off and studied veterinary science and initially i was doing a lot of hands-on work with neck and back and body pain and over the last 10 years I also came to realize that therapeutic touch can have a profound effect on the nervous system. And I found that I can, can really get some remarkable changes in anxious and traumatized animals by using therapeutic touch. So I've got a real passion for helping anxious and behavioral cases in, in my veterinary practice. I work two days a week in a really awesome integrative veterinary hospital here on the peninsula in Melbourne. And um, I got invited to speak at, a different summit with petsummits.com crew and then looked at their schedule and saw this anxiety summit without anyone listed to host it. And I just thought, wow, I'd love to do that. Contacted them about six months ago and um, they said, yeah, let's work together. And it's been a long and a busy journey as anyone who's ever been involved in organizing summits. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things you have to do, but um, the overwhelming motivation is to, is to help these lovely animals that share our lives, these beautiful dogs. Now, Mitzi, um, I've been able to help him a lot with his reactivity. You know, didn't used to be able to let him... I would have to pick him up when a dog came near him if we were out walking, stuff like that. And now um, he can he can manage to communicate with other dogs without losing his, his lunch all over the place. And Pearl, my other old whippet, is down on the floor with me just here. She's had thunderphobia issues, um, which when I was at uni, I got told, well, you can sedate them. But generally, they just get worse and worse as they get older. And Pearl has improved out of sight with the more complementary alternative touch-based therapies that I use. So, um, yeah, my, my motivation is to get information to people so that they can they can act to relieve the suffering that anxiety causes their dogs and for them often too. Yeah, and you were a speaker on my summit as well, recent summit, Decoding Your Canine, mm -hmm. um, and you did talk about tactile touch and therapy for dogs with anxiety, and that was really well received as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that. I do have to ask you before we go on, is it really cold on the peninsula because <laughs> you're all right? I've up. just come in from outside and I haven't oh. had the heater on in the house um, and it's cold outside. I've still got my jumper on because it's, um, I just haven't. The house hasn't warmed up enough for me to take it off yet, but it's still yeah. chilly. But yeah. it is starting to warm up a little bit, which is kind of nice. 
Yeah. So tell us about the Dog Anxiety Summit. Why is it so important to you and uh, what does it comprise? You've got 21 speakers, I think. Yeah, we've got 21, um, you know, leading experts from around the world in terms of um, working with dogs in a variety of ways to help anxious dogs. Uh, One of my really strong intentions with this summit was to get a a really broad cross-section of wisdom. So we've got, um, you know, probably a dozen holistic integrated vet speaking. We've got a couple of people that are into the animal communication and energy healing side of things. We've got a a physiotherapist. We've got um, Jed Davis from Polypet Products, who's who's supplement based. Um, He's one he's one of our sponsors. Um, I'll just pull up the thing to remind me of everything. Yeah, there's so many of them. It's hard to keep track. Um, we've got people talking about essential oils, um, flower essences, uh, sound healing therapy, um, t- talking about the human side of things. Uh, we've got a, a little pod of positive reward trainers from around the world, and with them we've got um, a board-certified veterinary behaviour specialist who's also on the speakers panel. So we've got a really beautiful broad cross-section you know uh, it's very much an integrative holistic approach but also keeping in mind that that you know it's really important to have a veterinarian on your team when you're dealing with anxious dogs for a variety of reasons that we go into in different interviews and um, it's also really important to at least leave the door open to consider the possibility of of prescription medications um, especially if you've got um, animals that are not responding to the more holistic and complementary side of things and also if you've got dogs that are you know getting into such extreme states of distress and panic that they they could be a danger to themselves or other dogs or, or humans yeah i mean i know apart from my interview with you for my summit i also um i've interviewed both lisa specter in the past um who's mm-hmm the music therapy and she's amazing and also dr christopher parkle who's also a speaker on your summit and um i mean he has so much to share with his um i mean medications uh in particular and everyone uh, not many sorry let me rephrase it so a lot of people think medications it's big and scary and you know they don't want their dogs to be zombies and he kind of turns that on on its head and says it doesn't have to be like that and you know there's there's ways around that but um, Lisa's amazing too. Her her approach to um, the way you use music for dogs with anxiety, I, I love it. And also talking about making it a sound safe home. Yeah, so we, we've got four days of speakers. It's totally free to attend live. Um, you'll see a, a link to come and register in the in the I'll description here as well from from Ness. Day one's all about understanding anxiety in dogs. I'll be speaking about how I understand anxiety as simply being arousal that's stuck on, that's got nowhere to go. Um, Dr. Ava Frick will be talking about getting to the the why of anxiety, causes of anxiety, and a novel treatment approach that she's developed. Oh, I love Dr. Ava. Yeah, she was on my summit as well. She's amazing too. Yeah, she's, a, she's really, really lovely in speaker. We've got Dr. Christina Chambro talking about understanding and resolving human and environmental triggers of anxiety in dogs. Uh, Dr. Janet Rock, who's talking about separation anxiety and essential oils. Uh, Anna Maria Vasquez, who is an uh, animal communicator, energy healer. She'll be talking about how everything is energy, anxiety in dogs and the energy, energetic, subtle energetic conditions that can be tangled up in that. And to round out day one, we've got Laurie Edge Hughes, who's a, a very skilled physiotherapist who'll be talking about sensory integration and anxiety in dogs. Then in day two, we take a deep dive into alternative and holistic treatment options for healing anxiety in dogs. We've got Dr. Jean Hoffby talking about flower essences. Lisa Spector, as you mentioned, um, music for anxiety in dogs and creating a sound safe home. Dr. Jeff Feynman talking about vitality and balance system and how it may work to help anxious dogs. Here comes my cat who's coming to video bonus. <laughs> Um, Dr. Kara Gubbins, who's talking about how animal communication can and can't help anxious dogs. Oh, oh beautiful. Um, 
Dr. Barry Sands talking about creating harmony and coherence within yourself to help your anxious dogs. I like mm, that. That's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really important topic, yeah. And Mitzi's going, oh, I don't know about this cat business. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> then we've got uh, Jed Davis whose uh, presentation is on reducing anxiety and objective approach to a stress-free pet. So that's the first two days, and then we've got another two whole days after that. My goodness, that's crazy. It's it's a, a so such an amazing panel of speakers that you've got. What was your um biggest takeaway or what, what was the thing that sort of astounded you the most? Oh wow, I learned so much from from I, I learned at least something amazing from everybody who who I interviewed or, or, or who submitted a presentation. Um just you know, and I, I've got a passionate interest in anxiety and dogs and I I've been working away at understanding how to help them better for ages, but I still learned so much. You know, day three, we dig into training and socialization, behavior modification approaches for helping anxious dogs. Got Dr. Ian Dunbar, who's like the, the godfather of um, positive reinforcement dog training and puppy school and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, he's talking about fear periods in puppies, and really he's, what he's talking about is how he believes that there's no such thing as a fear period in a properly socialised puppy and we go right through what you need to do to socialise a puppy. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Now we've got Teodi Anderson talking about why aversives make anxiety worse. Um, Kamal Fernandez talking about positive reinforcement and behaviour modification in healing anxiety in dogs. And, of course, we've got you, Ness, on day three too. <laughs> uh, we went into... Decoding separation anxiety and talking about thresholds and green and orange and red zones of arousal and all that sort of thing. And on day four, we are going into the veterinary treatment of anxiety. We've got Dr. Alex Avery, who's an integrated vet from New Zealand, uh, talking about why you absolutely need a veterinary exam and work up to make sure you're not missing any um, yeah. undiagnosed pain or other disease that can be absolutely. causing a computing. Yeah. Dr. Christopher Packle, who's talking about yeah. veterinary prescription medications, when and why they might be needed. Uh, Dr. Matthew Muir talking about integrative medicine, herbal medicine and diet for anxiety. We talked a lot about the gut-brain axis mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. talk, which was really fascinating. Dr. Sharice Roth, who's talking about vet pet, you know, the professionals who care for our animals and their anxiety levels and how that can... Um, so how can talking about how we can support our professionals that are working with our pets? All right, but they're all coming up to join us. Oh, what's this? Who's this? <laughs> oh, you need to lie down, Pearl. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to see me. And Mitzi's now pushing in. <laughs> Mitzi, you need to move out, dude. Out you go. Outside there. Out there. Little bit. <laughs> so Pearl's got a bit of. Dementia and separation oh, anxiety. Sometimes she just yeah. needs more cuddles. Yeah. Um, then I'm talking about healing anxiety with therapeutic touch, and we've mm -hmm. got Dr. Awesome talking about CBD as a treatment for anxiety. And the other reason these two dogs are a little bit on me like a rash is that yesterday was fasting day, and they they're saying they're very very. Oh, hungry. they want their dinner. <laughs> their dinner. Yeah. What time do you normally feed them? It's quite late, I guess. So you've, you've oh, well, had a busy day, I expect. About now, after I've had my dinner, so they they sort of yeah. saying it's definitely dinner time, Doctor. Yeah, oh, yeah. My dinner. <laughs> I'm starving to death. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I don't know if I'd get away with it with mine. They'd be like, "Come on, they're, I've got they're all in here. I've got them all at my feet, sort of." behaving so far but i don't know how long that's going to go on for <laughs> they are and is your cat them. waiting for its dinner as well then yeah is the it? cat's also putting pressure on me for dinner time <laughs> does the cat fast um yes the cat's fast too yeah. all the animals fast right yeah when when it's fast time and it, it does does him a lot good. One of my cats was terribly chubby until we started doing that. Now he's nice and lean and healthy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So um, did we get up to day five for the speakers? There's four days. Four, four days. days. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of speakers. Um, and so it is free to register, isn't it? Totally free to attend live. Um, mm -hmm. I, 
you know, I strongly encourage everyone who's watching that if you do come along, it's kind of a really sensible investment to upgrade to the all access pass because yeah, totally. then you get lifetime access and you know every dog with anxiety is unique they they need you've got to often try different treatments and different approaches to get the thing that's most effective and most helpful and then often as you move through the whole journey of of healing anxiety things change you might need to um mitzi right i'm going to kick you off You're too much <laughs> Um, you know, you might need to drop some things and suddenly not working so well when things change yeah. and pick up other things. And I think it'd be very valuable to have this as a, a library or a resource to, to refer back to whenever things change and you need to change what you're doing with your anxious dogs. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, um, just just to be able to, you know, you always miss things when you listen to something, don't you? So even if you listen to it live, there's going to be ones that you want to go back and revisit over and over again. So if you buy the all access pass, then you've got it there. You don't have to think, oh, I missed that bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So if, if, so obviously my clients or anybody in this group have, has got separation anxiety dogs, what, why would you say they need to come and join the summit? Because just as a, a an addendum to that is, often dogs with separation anxiety also have generalised anxiety. Not all the time, but they often do. So what would you say and to them? They often have other things like sound sensitivities or perhaps yes. reactivity as well and, you know, maybe panic about different things. And, um, you know, it's very rare for a dog with one anxiety sort of symptom or condition to only have that. So what I'd say to people, you know, the you're – probably your community is already pretty engaged with being active and proactive so you're going to hear new perspectives and new ideas and new approaches and, and new um, interventions and treatments that you can then consider to integrate into your your anxious separation anxiety dogs treatment plan so you can serve them better and help them heal better Mm. And it's so true what you're saying, like just um, if they've got, say, for example, separation anxiety, they they may also have reactivity issues, but it all stems, it all can come from the same place, kind of. So it could be um, if you if you can help solve or um, remedy one part of the puzzle, it will flow on to the other part. Absolutely, you know, and we're going live tomorrow. Well, um, <laughs> it's kind of Friday in USA time for all you USA people, but it'll be our Saturday morning when, when we can access here in Australia, can access the live sessions for free. Each day you get 24 hours to access all, all the presentations. Um, and like I said, um, there's a, a, a really reasonable investment to, to upgrade to the all access pass. If you up, if you invest in the all access pass before it kicks off, it's a little cheaper. It gets yes. a little bit more expensive once the summit's actually begun, and then after the summit finishes, it gets more expensive again. Yeah. So, so basically, it's an early bird special at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you um, are keen on, if you think you want it, do it now before it's too late. In other words, well, not too late, but before the price goes up. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, and if if you want to have a look at it first and say oh, I need to have a look at this and see if it's worth that money well then you can come along and watch the live sessions for free and um, you know it's it's incredible value there's so much wisdom and so much high level information in this summer that's just not funny and there's a whole bunch of freebies as well isn't there yeah um, there's there's a couple of ebooks and other things I wrote about 5,000 words on oh. understanding and um, treating anxiety holistically and with with from an integrative approach, um, sort of mm -hmm. a bit of a brain dump of how I how I work with animals that are anxious. Um, yeah, so there's there's a stack of really good information to to get and some some cool free downloads that go with it. Um, I can see a couple of people watching. So guys, if you've got any questions, let us know. While well, we've got Doctor Ed, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, sure. Was, yeah, so um, hopefully somebody will ask something while, while we're doing that. Where did you get the healing vet come? Where, where did the actual name come from? Um, so when, when I first 
started my first home visit practice in Townsville. I was the home visit vet for about seven or eight years. And during that time, it gave me the freedom to explore the more alternative, holistic side of things. And um, then I just wanted a name that that expressed that kind of philosophy more than the home visit vet. So the healing vet, I don't know where it came from. It just came out of nowhere. Um, so Michelle's just asked, how do I ask a question? Michelle, you can just write it in the comments. We can see your comments. Yeah, just so, like um, you asked that, that question. Yeah, just, just how you asked your question. <laughs> ask, ask away. Yeah, I think the healing vet is its a great name. I mean, vets should be healing, but the fact that you're calling it the healing vet sort of makes more. Um, okay. How long does it go for each day or how long does the um, summit go for each day? So you have 24 hours to access all the presentations or interviews from each day. So you have 24 hours where they're, they're available to watch. Then the next day, the next day, speakers and interviews are available if, you, if you're just going with the, the, the free live um, attendance way of, of registering. Hmm. And then so, it, um, so there's the four days, there's 24 hours each day. Yeah. And, um, and then... And then what happens after that? Anything? Um, as, um, well, we, we'll, we will be having a um, a, a post summit course, a four week course, which I'll be leading a small group of people through how to how to formulate and implement a treatment plan for their anxious dogs. Oh, that's great! Um, yeah, so that'll you'll learn more about that once we get through the the summit. We'll tell mm -hmm. you all about that and how to how to. Um, Get involved with that if you want some support and and advice about how to to formulate and and implement a treatment plan for your anxious puppy dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just got a question here. I'll put it up on the ticker. I'll just see who's asked this. I can't see who's asked it. Um, it's not coming up on Facebook for, or maybe it's come through. Anyway, um, I have a dog that gets anxious or it can be overly excited when we are in the car. She will whine when I come to stop thinking I'm going to leave her. Is it best to only take her in the car when we are going point to point and not leave her in the car? I think the answer to that would be possibly yes and possibly no. It depends on so many different oh, um, things and it's really hard for me to give you you know, precise advice on that sort of thing without sitting down for a good half an hour, an hour and talking about when it started and um, more information. how long it's been going on for and is it getting better, is it getting worse and, and a whole lot of stuff. But generally, as a, as a general thing with, with anxious animals, you want to minimise triggers that cause anxiety in every way you can. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, for me, with the separation anxiety, it's about keeping them under that threshold where they start getting anxious. Um, and green zone, green zone, green zone, green zone. Green zone yeah. yeah. Um, Dr. Ed, there is a Facebook group that people can join too, isn't there? Do, yes. You, um, we the pet, pet parents. Um, support group. Um, support group. Which once you join up, you you'll get plenty of opportunities and links to come and join that but the pet summits have if you just um yeah pet parents support pet summits support thing um if you can do that you can join us there i'll be answering questions there and i'll be doing a live q a in the morning of each session which is going to be ridiculously early for us here in australia <laughs> what time is it uh, it's 7.30 for me tomorrow oh. morning and then 5.30 and 5.30 Sunday and Monday morning and oh. 6.30 <laughs> Tuesday morning. So I'm not having my weekend sleep-ins this weekend. I'm, I'm on, on call to help anxious dogs instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Victoria, who's a former client of mine, says, thank you, I'm excited to listen um, to this having two anxious dogs. Yeah, well, I suppose we, we probably should wrap this up. I think we've been – we've said everything we need to say but um my invitation for you is to come along and join us on the summit um yeah. and please share the word because you you don't know who there might be in your immediate circle of friends and in the circle of friends that your friends have that are, are struggling so with an anxious dog yeah. and need this information to to help that anxious dog be happy and calm and have a good life 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, that is so true. Um, just because you don't necessarily have a dog um, that's got anxiety, there's, you've, there's definitely going to be somebody in your circle of friends that do. Yeah, yeah and, so, you know, if, you, if you've got a dog that doesn't have anxiety, um, you never know when an unforeseen traumatic thing could happen to your dog. You get in a car accident or you get blindsided by an off-lead crazy dog or, mm -hmm. you know, and suddenly you can have a dog that's been totally fine for years and years and years suddenly develop anxiety. So it can be good even as a preventative thing and to, to have good knowledge to how to help animals if something like that does happen to come to these kind of events. And even as dogs age, they get dementia and that can cause anxiety and, and even pain, as you said, yeah. Um, so any final words on the summit, Dr Ed? Look, I'm just so excited. I'm a little tired and excited because it's been a busy week, but I'm just um, so excited and so happy about uh, how well this has all come together, about the the uh, just the immense quality of wisdom and, and knowledge that's being shared by all the expert speakers. And I've got to tell you, you won't be sorry if you come. No. Yeah, I'm excited too. And, um, yeah, thank you for joining us this afternoon or this evening, I should say. Yeah. You're welcome. So we'll and see you later, everyone, and, you know, click on that link and come and join us. Yeah, and go and feed your dogs <laughs> and go and warm up as well. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Ed. See you. See you later.